In order to work with virtually anything, we must know the proper terminology first. It is the same with medical device software. Hi, I'm Christian Kessner and you are watching a video that is part of my course on software for medical devices and IEC 6234 at Medical Device HQ. You can find the link for it in the video description. This video is the second part of our lesson on the general terminology within a software system. Now, let's get started. Now let's start talking about a group of three terms. They often cause discussion and sometimes even confusion. I'm talking about software system, software item and software unit. You would, for example, use these terms when you are working with software architecture design. Software item is also frequently used when working with software risk management. As you see on the screen, a software unit is part of a software item, which is part of a software system. You can have many units in a single item and there can be many items in a software system. Let's have a look at the definitions of a software system. A software system is defined as an integrated collection of software items organized to accomplish a specific function or set of functions. The Lego man probably doesn't have many functions, but he's cool enough to represent a software system and he's built of different items. So what is an item then? Software item is defined as any identified part of computer program, such as source code, object code, control code, control data, or a collection of these items. Apparently, anything can be called a software item. So as a definition, it is not very helpful. But if you look at it from the bright side, you're free to define software items in any way you find appropriate. How big or small an item can be is up to you to decide in your software architecture work. The easiest way to manage this is of course to have a software system which is divided in one. So a software system equals a single software item. But unless it is a very tiny software, I always expect to find a software system divided into at least a few items. Not because there are any hardcore requirements to do so, but it simplifies things in, for example, maintenance. To give you an idea about what I mean, imagine you correct a bug. Without items, you should retest the full software system because you have no means to justify why you didn't. But with items, it is probably sufficient to retest only the affected items and appropriate regression testing on a system level. In addition to practical reasons, it is also convenient to know which parts of your software that contributes to hazardous situation, which are not. Working with items is useful to capture this knowledge. Hopefully, you start seeing a meaning in breaking down a software system into items. Now let's make it more hands-on and run an exercise with the Lego man. After my thorough initial architecture design, I've decided to divide Mr. Lego into four software items. Arms, head, umbrella and leg. Even though there is no definition of what may or may not be an item, every item must be identifiable both in your source code and throughout your documentation. Documenting architecture can be done in many ways. A common approach is to draw a tree to visualize the structure, but you can also write a regular text document. It's up to your preferences. Mr. Lego is now split in four items, but I still think some are too big. I want to take it one step further. But before doing that, I want to introduce you to the third term in the group, which is software unit. Software unit is used to indicate when an item is not divided any further. When an item is not divided any further, this is usually where the actual coding happens. When IEC 6234 describes requirements applicable to design and coding, it refers to units. Please don't get too hang up on the terms items and units. The term software unit is mainly used to structure the standard and identify requirements applicable to the actual coding work. So in my view, units and items are the same but whenever there is coding involved, regardless of what a piece of software is called, unit requirements in the standard applies. If we now refine the architecture and take Mr. Lego to the next level, we could decide that arms and umbrella 
are just as beautiful as they are, but head and legs are more complicated and there's, there's a point in refining those items further. The head is even more complicated, so it ends up with a third level. If we apply the terminology with items and units, this would be the result. Items which are not further refined can be called units. Hopefully, you're still hanging in there because here comes the twist. Based on the initial design, we had four items, but two of them should no, now formally change the units. How do we deal with them? Well, it does not matter. Again, unit is just a term used to explain activities and requirements in the standard. If you find it useful to use the correct terms in your documentation, that's fine. But I'm relaxed about this and use, usually just stay with using only items in my work. This provides more freedom in merging units into items or splitting items into units without the need to change documentation just because of terminology. The important thing is that you in your documentation can show where the units are in your design and that you know that unit requirements in the standard apply regardless of if they are named units or not. Before we say goodbye to Mr. Lego, I want to highlight that you can mix items and units on the same level. Just because I decided to refine the eyes items in this example, I don't also have to split nose and ear. Now one last thing about software unit before we look at one more example. A widespread misunderstanding is that the term unit is equivalent to unit in unit testing, commonly used by software developers to test software. It is not. A software unit, as defined by IEC 62304, can be tested with help of multiple unit tests. And you can also verify items with help of unit testing. Let's practice the terms on a COVID-19 tracker system. Four items define the software system. We have two apps, a web front-end and a back-end server. And yes, these are massive items. But if the full software is significant, the top items will usually also be substantial. If we refine the Android app into units, you probably find units like graphical user interface, a local database storing intermediate data, and a Bluetooth unit to measure social distance. Lastly, a data exchange model interacting with a backend server item through a defined interface. At the software unit level, we now can use unit tests to test functions within the unit. Let's move back up to the system level again. I strongly recommend you invest time in defining your software system accurately. It is essential to understand the boundaries of your system to manage software risk management, future releases, and maintenance properly. The example we just looked at could look completely different depending on how you define your software system. Together, the front end and server might work as a software system on its own. The apps are just optional and not part of your software system. The same goes with embedded systems. If you have a software tool to read engineering data from a USB port, it does not need to be part of your medical device software system. IC62034 is not giving you any directions about this, but you might find guidance in regulations, but otherwise it's entirely your decision. Great job! You have made it to the end of this video. Getting the terminology right is a great help in avoiding frustration and misunderstandings. So make good use of all the terms we have looked at. Soup, legacy software, security, and the trinity software system, software item, and software units. I hope you enjoyed playing with plastic bricks as much as I did. Care to share your thoughts in the comments? While you're down there, make sure to click that subscribe button and turn on the notifications. Are you on LinkedIn? Follow us at Medical Device HQ. We'd love to have you there. Thanks for watching and have fun playing with unit and items. Bye.